Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I have my second video in my beginner's series on Reason. Um, if you missed part one, there's a link to it, um, and that's really an overview of all of the major screens in Reason. This video here is going to dig into the mixer view of Reason. Um, and this is not going to be an in-depth view. This is going to be really focused for beginners. Um, if you've been watching my videos, you know, and if you've probably used Reason for more than 50 or 60, maybe 100 hours, you're probably not going to get much out of this series. This is really trying to um, just teach you how to get around Reason. And so let's jump in right now. This is the mixer view, and there's three things to note here, and we'll get into all of them. But the mixer view you can almost even subdivide into three sections. Here you've got a channel strip, and we've actually got multiple channel strips all the way over here. Then in this section you have the master section, and then on the far right you've got sort of a miniature map of all of the sections laid out. And the ability to jump from one to the other. So that's part one. Now, what do those things do? I think the easiest way of describing it is by saying that the farthest right side, right here, this is all navigation. Um, and it's important to navigate, but that's uh, pretty much just getting from top to the bottom. And then you've got these four knobs here, which allow you to actually hide each section and um, get it down to its constituent parts, which is exactly what we're going to do right now so that we can focus on one part at a time. So here we've got channels and you can name the channels whatever you want. You can double click on them. Sometimes you want to call them Cave Monster, although that was just the name of the patch. Um, so you can change the name of them. You can select multiple channels by hitting, holding down shift or by holding down control and clicking on different ones. And you can right click on channels to change their color. So for example, now all of these things that go into the base bus are green and that makes it easier from an organizational standpoint. You can also take any track and drag it somewhere else for organizational purposes. Now you'll see here we have um, the ability sequence and rack. That's what that stands for basically and it'll take you to the sequencer view or the rack view and there'll be further videos talking about those. Um, next you've got the output section and you can either send it to a bus um, which if you're just starting out with recording don't worry about buses. If you are just new to Reason but are experienced with recording basically uh, you can click here and you'll have a list of all the buses that are currently in the track or you can create a new output bus. Um, you also have the ability to right click on a channel. Let's go right here. Right click. And again, this is for beginners to music production. Ignore this tip. If you're just new to Reason, you can create a parallel channel right here by quickly just clicking sort of on the body of the channel, but not on any of the knobs within the channel. Um, boom, you got a para P1 stands for parallel cave monster. Um, another thing, just backing up, you'll notice bus channels have red knobs, regular channels have gray knobs, or uh, not switches? Let's say switches. Um, so, that is the way this first section works for the regular channels. For the master channel, um, you actually have the ability to switch between several different monitoring modes by hitting mode. Again, that's sort of for advanced people. And if it peaks, you can hit the reset button if you've adjusted your levels and you think it now works better. You also have the ability to view an EQ that will show sort of a live uh, version of your song. There's no need to actually listen to this now, so I'm not going to do that. But here's a master fader. Um, and again, the ability to jump the sequencer, the rack view. The ability, you notice there's mute here. And you, if you see this 
mute it, or in blue, you can click it and it turns mute off on all the channels. Similarly, if you've got channels soloed, which means they're the only ones playing, they're soloed, you can click on solo all off and that turns off all of the solos. So let's say you've got a few tracks soloed and a few tracks muted. Well, if you take solo all off, the muted tracks will still be muted, uh, but the solo won't. But if you take that off, then everything will be muted and it does not remember which is which, unfortunately. Um, then you have dim minus 20 dB, which basically just allows you to quickly turn everything down on the master channel by 20 in case somebody walks in or you get a phone call or uh, you just want to have it in the background. I also have the option of enabling delay compensation here and um, you have various outs that you can be monitoring and so you can control their level that you're monitoring it. Um, you also now on the individual channels you have the panning from left to right. This basically determines where they are in the stereo field and the width knob and for certain sounds they exhibit um, the ability to spread them out or not. For other sounds like monophonic guitars that you record on one channel you don't have the ability to increase um, the width. So like this um, and for certain mono tracks you can't increase the width but um, without doing some nat unnatural processing. But you can't do it just right here on this view. All right, so that's sort of the fader section. Now let's go to the next, okay, we can't turn off the fader section. Uh, the next section, which is the insert section. Um, and so you can insert effects into each channel. So like for this guitar here, I could basically hit that open button and then say, okay, well, I want the instrument bus preset to be there. And so now it's here. And if you set up, this is complicated and this is not how I do inserts, but um, you can set up basically patches where you could control the insert effects settings from here. You can bypass the effects by clicking bypass um, and you can edit the inserts directly by clicking here. Um, so now let's go back to the mixer by clicking the mix button. That was the rack window. We'll get to that later. Um, so if we go to the master channel, you can also have inserts on the master channel. Um, and you can choose whether or not you want those inserts to be before the compressor or after the compressor, uh, the master compressor, which we'll get to in a minute, um, which is what this insert pre does. Um, and this video is not going to talk about when you would want to use master bus compression or where you would want to do it. That's just where this option exists. And you can bypass the master bus, bus effects there. So now we'll get rid of inserts and now go to the dynamic section. And so if you look at the channel dynamic section, it's basically split up into two parts, the green knobs and the red knobs. The green knobs are the master section compressors, um, and you can either turn them on or on or off. You can choose what it, whether it's in peak mode or average mode, and whether the attack is fast or slow. And this here will show you, if you actually have a song, this will light up um, with it. Um, also, if you want to do keying, um, should we do that? We're going to skip keying for this video, um, but this, you plug it in through the back of the channel and this is where it would go. Um, here's your ratio and your release. And on the bottom you have a, the option of using a gate or an expander. Turn it on or off and whether or not you enable gate mode or not, or expander mode or not. Your range, your threshold, your release, your hold time, and whether it's a fast or a slow um, release. Then going over here on the master section, you have the master bus compressor, and you can turn it on or off. Uh, you've got three threshold settings to make up gain, which the channel settings don't have. Um, release, including an auto release setting, which also the individual channels don't have. Um, and a fixed attack times up to 30 milliseconds, and the threshold here, and then the ability to set up a key. Um, so that's the dynamic section. 
Now let's go to the sends. So basically, um, sends are a different way of getting effects onto a channel. Um, if you're just starting out, sends are probably a better way of doing sort of global sounds, let's just say. Um, let's say you want to have the same reverb on multiple sounds and use it as a send. Basically, you can gather multiple instruments and send them all to one reverb. And you would do so by clicking, like, let's say the one button here. This chooses the amount you send. And then here you would actually have to create a send, which you would do by hitting edit. Um, you actually have to go. I don't know if we... Let's not get into that. We'll do that on the rack section. But um, this is the level that it's being sent to, and you can also control the panning of the send. Um, there's also... Um, the effects return here. Um, so here's the... Sorry for jumping ahead, but basically the effects sends are actually on the EQ channel, and the effects returns are here on the effects channel and you can control their pan, monitor their volume and mute them here. Um, and so this is where you would edit the effects. You could give them names like reverb, slap, whatever it is that's helpful to you. Um, and then let's hide your reverb for a second. You can also choose if your effects sends are pre-fader or not. So basically you could have, it basically can control the wet dry balance by let's say, um, let's say I have this sound zero on the fader or very quiet in the mix, but I want it to have a lot of effect on it. Well, that effect send is basically going to be independent of the fader setting when pre is selected. Um, and let me just take a moment here. If you're enjoying these videos, I'd highly encourage you to check out our Patreon channel. It has a lot of it, uh, detailed tips on reason for all skill levels. Um, it really helps support this channel, which takes a lot of effort to put together. And I'm investing the proceeds back in this so that we can grow the channel and get better content, more high quality stuff for you guys. So please consider checking that out. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, there's a subscribe button down there. And be sure to give this video a like. Um, yeah, and don't hesitate to leave a question in the comments section. So, moving along, we next have the EQ section. And in the EQ section, it works surprisingly, or not surprisingly, a lot like an EQ. So first you have to turn the EQ on. There's a knob that can turn it on or off. Now going from the top to the bottom, you've got a low pass filter, which does this basically, and a high pass filter, which does this, which basically means, um, so you click on this, right, let's do this as well. So this is a spectrum EQ, which you get by clicking this, or there's a hotkey for it. But um, if EQ is off, then there's no controls. We'll just keep this sound so you can see there's actually would be a waveform playing. And if you turn EQ on, this these are the various knobs that, well, let's do it one at a time. So the high pass filter cuts out everything the high pass filter lets everything higher than the point at which you draw it go through. So if you could hear this, it would be all the low sound would be getting removed from this channel. And the low pass filter allows everything lower than the filter to go through. So you can see we're chopping off all of the highs, basically. Then if you turn e the EQ on, you have these three sections one of these four sections here. So you've got the high frequency, which is the red, and it corresponds to the red dot, whether you want to use this or the knobs, and you'll notice the knobs actually turn in response. As I move it left to right, the kilohertz knob moves, and up and down, the decibel knob moves. And you have the option of either using a shelving function, which is the default, um, which is a broad brush, or to hit the high frequency bell, which just does a narrow cut or boost. Then for, and that also applies to the gray knob down here, gray button, which is the low frequency. You can do bell or shelf. So you've got two shelves 
and then you've got two mid-band EQs, the green and the blue. And these can either work in this broad mode, or if you hit, which I believe is, I don't know if it's called American mode or not, but if you hit E mode, um, I believe that stands for English mode, and that is narrower or steeper curves. So look at the difference. These are big, wide curves, especially if you only have one on. So this is a 12 dB gain here, and then English mode, it becomes much narrower. And then you can use the Q knob to make it even narrower still, or you can hold down the Alt key and drag up or down. And so the EQ basically works um, either graphically through this or through these knobs. Um, you can turn on the bell or the shelf. And then you also have the option of putting the high and low pass filters before the side chain um, or not. Um, and last but not least, we have the insert section here. And this, on the top, it controls the gain going into the channel, which um, will tr be sort of where the gate and the compressor triggers off of. The gate and compressor do not trigger off of these volume sliders. And you should really, in a perfect world, your mix should be set. All these not levers should almost be at zero. And uh, you should just get the level sort of more or less there with the input gain and then just fine tune it or automate it here. Um, then if you have two channels that are sort of related to each other, like if you've got two guitars or something parallel, uh, you can invert the signal, invert the phase, so that you don't have a problem with the invert button there. Um, if you want to have your inserts, your effects, be, here's the, basically the signal flow here. So you can have, by default, it's the compressor section and gates, then the EQ, then the inserts. But let's say instead you want to have your reverb that gets compressed and then EQ'd, you could do that. Or let's say even you want um, to have your reverb and then you want to cut out a bunch of frequencies from the dynamic. So like the low end doesn't get compressed. You can do that. And then especially if you want to have the um, high pass filters not affect it, you do the, this is the same as the switch on the EQ section. So that's... <laughs> A little more detail than I was planning on doing, but that is basically Reasons Mixer in a nutshell. Um, as you can tell, it takes a long time to master this. Um, that's just what everything does, and then actually knowing when to use it is basically a lifelong um, skill. And I have a lot more advanced videos, and I will continue to make more advanced videos that actually dig into why you would want to do any of these things. But this video is just sort of so showing you your way around Reason. Um, if you've got any questions, leave them down below. Um, there will be follow-up videos on all the other basic aspects of Reason. I hope you enjoyed this, and don't forget to 